Welcome to part 10 of my tutorial on how to make models or rather how I make models uh, to operate in trains and for this tutorial I'm going to make a start on animation and I'm just going to use some basic mesh shapes and animate them in this first lesson so that you can see how uh, the basics are done. So I'm going to use the standard primitives cylinder and this will represent a, uh, a wheel but it's I'm not going to texture it or anything I'm just making it as a solid cylinder so there we go there's a cylinder and it's very big at the moment so we'll just come up to our customize grid settings home grid one foot okay which we've done before and I shall set the radius, not the diameter, the radius to two feet, much smaller, and the height to well, I make it one foot. Okay, and you'll notice also that it's got five segments within it. So let's zoom in and have a look at it in wireframe. Divide it up in a whole series of slices. We don't want that. It's just wasting polys. So we take it out of one I and mean, it still represents we look in our polygon counter 72 polys and there's no way you're not going to spend as it were we use a lot of polys in making um, uh, animated bogies so let's go up to our select and move and let's center it <coughs> so we can see it's centered so if we come pull back here and we can see that's where it is let's convert that to smooth and highlight so we can see it now it doesn't matter that it doesn't look like a wheel for a locomotive it's simply a demonstration of how we're going to animate a two-wheel bogey for use in freight vehicles passenger vehicles and so on uh, so there we are so um, we've got it to make let's make sure that the origin the pivot is centered and we want to rotate it 90 degrees well we didn't set our there we are our toggle to uh, the snap to 5 degrees so there we are 90 degrees and if we look down on our wheel from above we now need to alter it not in that direction but not in that direction even we need to rotate it so it's like that okay and uh, it's got itself rotated 45 degrees there so we'll just zero that okay and we'll center and align to the world all right so that's the first wheel <coughs> and we're just going to move that along to say Center it on whatever that is, three foot. Okay, just three foot. One, two, three. And it's still a bit too big, so let's reduce it down to six inch width. Oops, that's six foot. That's six inches. And we'll center a line to world. And let's position that. So this is exactly three foot. Okay, so that's our first wheel. Let's just, to make another one, we'll just clone it. Okay, and we'll just remove the zero position and put it over on the other side. Let's make them a little bit clearer so we can see what we're dealing with here. A bit brighter. Okay, now we're gonna clone this one again. Let it clone. So we've got three cylinders now and we'll move that over to the middle make sure it's the middle down the bottom here and we'll reduce its radius down to three inches but we'll increase its length from six inches to six feet there we are six feet and we'll center the pivot 
and we'll make sure that that is zeroed. There we are. So that essentially is a two wheel bogey. And um, the next thing we want to do is to link them all up. So rather than, I'll just change the colour of that so you can see the axle is different to the other. And um, there we are, there's the axle. Now there are some faces there that we can get, lose, the end of the axle, because it's buried inside the wheels. But there's not many other faces we can lose. We could probably reduce the number of sides. Now the side of a cylinder is the number of straight lines that go to make the cylinder. So actually I would re reduce that down to about 12. It's still 48, you see, so it's quite a substantial number. But I would increase the number on the wheels because you want them looking as well as you can so it's worth spending your polys on the wheels as it were so there we are there's an axle with two wheels and we're going to animate them we're going to animate them to turn around but first of all what we want to do is to not join them together but just group them together so they'll operate as a single group group okay and we can also center the pivot on the group and also looking at in at the side well really we're six inches up let's zero that as well so we've got all zeros there we come back to the way you position these things in g course but let's just take it all on the zeros at the moment x y z zero coordinates and now we're going to move into um a new type of object this is, this is a helper and uh, so it's the fourth one along under these standard objects so we've got standard primitive splines lights I've never used cameras I've never used helpers I do use and we'll use a lot this one systems never use that you probably can but not a clue um, and we're going to choose the one called dummy and this draws out a rectangle but it's kind of blue and these colors are always going to be the same you can't change the colors of these well you probably can in the defaults but or in the game wasn't even set up but i would never change that because that's, that's what i've always associated now as a helper and there's another type of helper which is the other one we're going to use which is a point and there's a point helper and we can change the parameters of that for example we can bring it down to um, constant screen size which means it's visible without it being shooting off all over the place and it's in the yellow well, that sort of green yellow slight green cast of the yellow maybe that's with my eyes. anyway we're not using that at the moment but we'll come back to that because that's how you add steam and smoke and indeed how you assemble your locomotive because you'll have the body of the locomotive and then each of your bogies will be attached to one of these points. So we're going to call this one, this helper. And this uh, naming convention is very important. B, R, full point in between, and full point, full point after the B, full point after the R, full stop. Axel 01. Okay. And using our select and modify we're going to zero it on all the coordinates oops i'm just trying to turn the caps lock on uh, there we are. so we've zeroed it so it's on the same position and we can make sure we've got our lines of all that's all the same okay so this is a dummy and it's hidden it won't show in trains but it's got to be there you want these to move it's got to be there so now we're going to animate the dummy so we come down here to our animation commands which we've not used before and the first thing we need to do is to check on the time configuration and this looks really complicated and frankly, unless you're going to do some really complex animation, you don't need to change any of this. Um, although the length, no, the length is up to a hundred. Um, you want the length? The length is normally thirty. I think 
has to set like that because I was doing some more detailed animation. Normally have the length set for 30. I click on OK. 30, no, 32. 32. Set it to 32. OK. So click on OK. And that means um, the animation is going to cycle through a complete action every 32 frames. So now to make animation editing active, we've got to click on animate. And we always work in the top window with animation. No, we don't. We don't always. But until you've really learned how to do animation, work in the top window. Now we're just going to work on the dummy. And that's the position of the dummy at frame zero. So we'll jump to previous frame. We jump to the end frame which is number 32. So we now want to move the dummy to the position we want it to be in, in frame 32. So always you rotate downwards like this. And watch down in the coordinates down bottom right to the left of the animation. You'll see it's going up to you know, 310 325, 340, 355, 360 and it's back where it started. I was work looking down here. It's only active when you're actually turning it. And that's frame 32. So if we go back to the beginning and um, now just watch this item here and be our axle O1 and watch what happens when I play the animation it's swinging around, rotating, and those are the frames running there. Okay. And just take that back to zero, make sure it's at zero. And that's all you need to do for a, a bogey animation, except of course only the dummy is moving, not the wheels. So, unclick animate, because we've finished editing the animation. This is the simplest form of animation. We've finished animating it. It'll still go if you play the button. There we go. Take it back to zero. Select the group. Now what we want to do is link it to the dummy. So what we do is we select the link to and we select this and then we have to go into here the select by name and we select the one we want to link it to which is that dummy and link Yep. and let's go down here and I think we'll be able to see it uh, so now when we just um, click on the animation it should turn the wheels and the axle there we go you can just about see them go now we need to stop that and go back and just move it forward a frame at a time you can see the wheels are turning Take that back. So that's the wheels turn. So you've got a cycle there of 32 frames, and um, the reason I've chosen 32 is because we can divide that into 16, and then into 8, and then into 4, and then into 2, and then into 1, and that will give us a lot of flexibility. Uh, let's just just to demonstrate that really is turning those wheels. I'm going to stick a box yeah, and I'm going to move it over to the wheel really I mean, you wouldn't be doing this obviously it's just to show it and now I'm going to select the link select what I want to link it to I want to link it to that and if I display the subtree which is really important when you come into animating You'll see there that already it's got BR axle 01 and indented is group 01, which is the uh, two wheels and the axle. So we're going to link it. <coughs> We've got that selected, and we're going to link it to BR axle 01. Link, and that flashes for a moment. So let's come down to here and just to demonstrate, there it is, flying away. 
Oh, it's beginning to look like a coupling rod, except of course it's going round wrong. But we're going to get there. So that gives you an idea of um, animation, just an introduction to animation. And um, have a go at this, achieve this, and then in um, number part 11, I'll move on to something a bit more complex where it makes um, some real wheels with spokes and um, flange and everything and add it to a dummy and get them rotating and then we we'll clone them up and have another set here with another dummy rotating at the same time and then we'll add in a couple of coupling rods uh, and I'll do, you know we'll, uh, texture them so they look right and I'll introduce reflection just to give you a bit of brightness on that bit of the wheel on the tire of the wheel that actually touches the rail so there we are that's the base uh, line for uh, animation and we're going to come into that in a lot more detail in the next couple of tutorials but that business about the hierarchy that is absolutely crucial one final point is that is grouped and we don't, we don't need that um, we do want to ungroup it we don't want anything grouped when we're exporting it doesn't work and if we look at our those three items that are in the group analysis separately but they're still under the control of this dummy b dot r dot axle o one okay so that's going to be our starting point for the next tutorial when we begin to make um uh, a, a sort of fantasy bogey i'm going to just make something up to to demonstrate it okay so um i hope that's been helpful do try it out and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much indeed.